they can go either way with this. I'll be really surprised if they just start with like a jungle Ursa. They could also do that though. I mean, they could like have the Ursa pull and kind of try and transition him into the farmer. But yeah, this should be a really interesting game. I like that. I like the. They definitely needed a. Like their last pick had to be some sort of like a carry hero or a hero at the very least that could transition into one like a rape king or something along those lines. And or like, but it's gonna be harder from the radiant side. So I, I this Ursa pick's just very, very. very okay, they, they take the prop. So That's they'll fine. just take a standard offlaner. Yeah, nothing too okay. about that. I one. definitely prefer LAI's lineup. But we'll see. <laughs> we will see. This so is... Lin is going to be playing the Centaur. I'm not 100% certain the role he's been playing, but Lin is more of the uh, solo. He's more of a solo hero. So yeah, he's probably been playing him off lane. YJ. Okay, Demons is okay. Demons is there for. So it's going to be a support Ursa. Ursa, quote unquote support. support. Ursa in the jungle, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Lin's on the Batrider. Okay, I saw Lin in. That's not his name. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ZYF on the Centaur. ZYF is... And Inflame is, tends to be the position one, if uh, memory serves me. Mm, no? Is that wrong? He's more of a mid. He, he, oh, it depends. Okay. He goes back and forth. He's like yeah. a core. Inflame. He's like one of their core players. Inflame. Inflame is generally like a mid solo, or like, okay. DDC is a five player. Five and ZYF is YJ, Inflame. is what we saw when we were doing our research. But... YJ, okay. Yeah, I know him at ZYF. He was on... Okay. I forget what team he's on, but I definitely... Cast that, uh, uh, cast he that was name. on previously. Arinda. Oh, Arinda. That was on Arinda. So, all right. Well, should be an interesting game. Another best of one for us here. And we'll see how these lanes settle down. Radiant side, it appears it will be Lin in the off lane on the Bat Rider. Uh, in the mid, that does put Inflames Invoker. So, down bottom, it will be a safe lane Centaur on ZYF. DDC will be supporting on the Jakiro, and that means Demons will move into the jungle on this Ursa. He goes Stout Shield. And a s double set of tangos. All right. Six tangos. So he's, well, I gave two of them away. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's ready to ready to farm this up. Is, All right. Oh, oh, if only we had PPD on this cast. I want to hear what he thinks about it being not dire. And in this lineup, I don't... I think he would say it's out. I like, I like the support Ursa. I really do. But I do not like it in this lineup and on radio but hey they might prove me wrong here i want them to i want them to prove me wrong there, there is a degree of just kind of chaos factor here of lai maybe thinking how do we handle a position for ursa in the jungle you know how fast just is this guy him. actually really far do we just ignore, ignore him? him do we try and ignore deal him? with it how serious of a threat Run does he put him. on the roche pit um, i mean when he gets a blink he's gonna do a lot of damage just because of having levels on a blink yeah but, 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 what, what is your standard what is a good blink timing for an Ursa solo in the jungle if they don't contest it? Exactly, I got that's one, what I mean. So I got one super early, but he got like two successful roams off when he did it at TI. Yeah, well, so. that, that makes a, a big difference. All right. We'll see. Initial boards come down from the Radiant side. Uh, they will put one to get some bottom rune coverage here on their entry, re entry way into the jungle. And uh, one up top. No vision of the top rune, but uh, some nice vision of this pull camp and this sort of central access way here. So we'll give Bat Rider some nice intel, make his life a little bit easier. Dire Observer comes down here right on the outskirt of uh, whole camp there, and they'll ward the high ground in a pretty comparable position. So both teams with similar amounts of vision. Dire side will do a 2-1-2, two -two, Morphling in the mid lane uh, on the solo roll. So up top it means Shadow Shaman and Brewmaster, and in the off lane it will be Super on the Skywrath and XTT on the Nature's Prophet. Batrider taking a lot of damage. Even though it's radiant side, like offlane bat, still just just pretty rough. Yeah, and this ward will block. He's just gonna hope to not die and then rotate into the jungle. But there's an Ursa in the jungle, so uh, that's the big problem here. And he's already <sighs> moving into the hard camp, so there won't be. I mean, you can do th it. There will be no stacks for this this bat rider to move into. And without with this pull camp ward, I mean, he'll probably try to stay to those. He'll probably try to keep the tr like the little triangle on the eastern side open for the most part, like these three camps. Yeah. Um, this one blocks though, right? I think so. Yeah, it blocked. Yeah, so. Oof. This is this is rough for LV in terms of efficiency. And Centaur, he'll be able to farm okay, but the Prophet is off to a good start. 6-0 and zero versus the 3-0 and zero Centaur. And I feel like his Blink Dagger needs to come out very quickly. Oh, oh, he's going to fall in the mid lane here. There's your wow. first blood. XDD. Wow, it's just a wave for him. Hmm. Okay. Kind of caught him out. So, yeah, now LV... 
off to an even more difficult start. Bow Rider will find his level two, which is that first milestone, but I think blocking this camp is so smart. It's just, when you need three blinks before your lineup comes online, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really interesting. See if they can pull it off. If, if they do, if they can get them, if they can get away with it, it's very scary mid to late game. Yeah, well, but I mean, conversely, now we know this Morphling is going to have a pretty good time. He's already off to a great start. Brewmaster is in free farm heaven in the top lane. XC 9 and 3. Uh, actually has missed a couple of last hits here, but still racking up the CS. So he'll have a decently timed blink, at least on point with the Centaur. So there won't be just mad tempo controlling coming out from LV. LAI will have something to contest with. Another thing that LAI is able to do is they're able to get the Skywrath bottom so that Nature's Prophet is even able to get CS and contest this lane very much. Normally yeah. when you see a Nature's Prophet go off lane, especially on the dire side, he just kind of just goes and goes, okay, I'm not going to die. I'm going to block some camps on my treants, maybe get the occasional last day, get levels, and I can rotate to the jungle if I need to. Right. But he's actually able to contest here. And Super's roaming around a little bit. He's probably going to try to do some damage to yeah, him they're here. They're going to try to make a super sandwich. Target caught out. And out comes the cold snap. There's the Forge Spirits there, stacking up the minus armor. Though he is a little bit low on mana. Super will survive, but a bit of a close call. Actually pulls the Centaur out of lane, so since he survived that, that is a, a bit of a victory. Pulls out the two cores from mid and bottom out of the lane and creates a little bit of space for... Uh, both the Prophet and the Morphling, a waveform forward, right onto Inflame, XDD just being aggressive, showing him that he's the boss, but not going for a kill here. Yeah, kind uh, of in the lane here. Yeah. It's where you want to be, and when you're a Morphling, you can bully the lane. It sucks. And the thing is, like, the Morphling doesn't have to really worry about rotations. He can do these really aggressive waveforms, and what's going to happen? The Urs is going to come out of the jungle and stun him? No. Like, he can be this aggressive and not worry about it. Yeah, because the rest it. of his team is completely taken up on other parts of the map. Look at this aggression here. He's just diving he under the tower. He has nothing to worry about. You're like, absolutely what's going right. to happen? Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> very little chance of rotation, especially if they have eyes on DDC. Uh, if the Jakiro is hiding off the map, then maybe he needs to be a little more cautious, but still no ice path. I don't even, know if this has been revealed that's yet. That's what I'm saying. Even then, he's like, it's he's just going to have, I mean, he gets flame breath and then he's slowed. Uh-oh, oh, he's going to find a free kill on demons. They go for the rune, and XDD is the one that finds it. Haste to make that an easy pick off, and now this Ursa gets slowed down even more. He did pick up his tranquils before he went down, so okay. minimal Sorry. gold loss, but the scarier part is just feeding this Morphling. Oh, you know, the problem with Morphling is that he takes a while to come online, and when you get a start like this, uh, it won't take too long whatsoever. Oh, in flames, he's gone. gonna fall yes. once more. Morphling, Faster. he has all three of the kills, and he's getting these Forge Spirits. He's level seven already. Wow. And Volker's level five. Oh, this is God. This is K pop toast. <laughs> it's just, I, I saw it. Like, even before the Ursa pick, it was, this is very greedy. They've got three solo heroes already. Well, how are we going to deal with it? We'll go really greedy. And yeah. if they don't pick supports that can just roam extremely well, we'll be fine. I mean, and look, look at his positioning in the lane. Look at this. He's just like, Forge Spirits, thanks for the money, dude. Normally you look at Forge Spirits like, man, those guys are pretty tanky. I can't, I, you can't go blow for blow with them. But at this point, the Invoker's just under level. He's already got ten. He's already got ten armor. He doesn't have to worry about supports rotating on him, and he can just bully his way in lane. Wow, this is it's this good. is really scary. So, as I was saying, the problem with Morphling, he takes a while to come online. But with farm like this, uh, if he wants a Lincoln's first, he'll have it very soon. Um, usually, it's Lincoln's or BKB is that first item, but. Even y yesterday in uh, Starladder SEA, we saw yeah. Morphling just rush a Manta, and it actually worked out mm -hmm. just fine. So XDD could opt he could even rush like an that. Ethereal Blade this game, and it wouldn't be the world. Yeah, that's actually when you're bowling out of control this quickly. Uh, it's certainly an option. Uh, Link Super. Is, Link is just, uh, Ooh, gonna... smoked up. They going on to Lin, but uh, he'll fly over the ravine here, and they still want to try and do as much damage. As oh, XDD going in, he's gonna block him. Oh, in. and the, that's a fantastic oh, teleport. Firefly <laughs> is expired. Now, that is just. Nowhere for the Bout Rider to go. Beautifully done. And that will make the rotation much worth it. He even secures the kill. That'll make it 4 to nil. And this graph getting very scary already, man. LA is just executing perfectly. Um, LV ran this kind of lineup where they just had to kind of get lucky in the early game and get by. Yeah. Once they just needed to be passive. This is one of these early games where well, just not uh, die. LAI just sit back. They don't really want to do anything. They don't press them. They just want to farm. Then LB are in great shape. They've got this huge greedy lineup, but the Morphling being so aggressive has been a huge problem, and now these rotations have really cost them. LV will start pressuring the bottom. Tier 1 tower. Ursa comes in to cut the lane. <laughs> uh, 
So maybe they'll find a little gold pick me up here. It looks like LAI will come to its defense too quickly. Profit will TP down, make some trance. They will burn the glyph, but with two points in liquid fire, this tower will go down very quickly. They need a few more heroes. Stampede is used. Super could be in some trouble here. Looking for the silence onto the centaur. Will find it. And uh, 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 they managed to get off the global, but oh boy, the promise split comes in and they bring down the centaur. Ursa's already fallen. Now Jakiro gets caught in the tornado and nowhere for DDC to go. It will be a one for three. Sunstrike secured the kill onto the Skywrath, but yeah, an obvious advantage there for LAI. And they keep the tower out of deny range. The tower was still up, so the brew was able to just TP to it and catch three heroes that were really low. And then no. Flame is going to go down again to the more fun. Yeah, this is just going to oh, be Oh, no, it. the cold snap is going to be enough. Okay. Oh. Uh, he might be able to turn around. He's having more strength. I think he'll be okay. Yeah, TP coming in. We'll scare him back. Sunstrike. Sunstrike will be on the mark, but it's not enough for the kill. 86 he damage will be there. Or, or eight points will survive and uh, bottle. Keeps him alive. Oh, no. Now the rotation's in. XTT and the damage from Skyrath secures the kill on Invoker and they'll go in on to DDC. Waveform forward. XDD's had time to regen up. One more arcane bolt. There come the That'll birds. Chase him down. The salve healing him up. It actually that? keeps DDC alive. It's obvious. Good work there still. I mean, LAI continuing to find the better exchanges across the board. And Morphling survives. That's the other big story there. This game is kind of like in sitcoms when you know something really embarrassing is going to happen and you like, don't want to watch. <laughs> because it's it's obvious right now that LAI has really had the better parts of this game and they keep executing better and everything for LV just keeps going almost hilariously wrong <laughs> with the yeah. three with the hero, three hero dive top and the bird just gets to come in and clean them all up and they engage well in the mid lane and are able to punish them over aggression, but not enough to actually get a kill off of it. It's not going LV's way. Yeah, now bottom centaur will be in some trouble. He does have a stampede, but they managed to get off the sprout. Oh, wow. He's got no clear clear cutting, no no nothing. He's stuck in the trees. He's not, not a lumberjack. lumberjack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Morphling is there just to clean him up. And you know, honestly, I think going shotgun first is a smart idea for XDD. That's a really good well, it's just a, a good thought because. They're right. already, like, susceptible to his burst from just waveforms. Lincoln's, so. Lincoln's is still okay because it's kind of like, it's kind of like Midas when you're ahead in that it extends your lead. And that it's probably, when you get a Lincoln's that fast, you're probably not going to be able to come back from it because then you could just can't kill the Morphling. And a, a Midas that early, like, cements your lead to the point where you're just not ever going to be able to farm past the point he gets to. Mm -hmm. So it's about, Lincoln's is about extending your lead, and Ethereal Blade is about just like ending the game. Uh-oh, Primal Split once more, XTT with the aggressive TP, nowhere for Inflame to go, he'll just get clicked down, DDC caught inside of the Shackles, another easy 2 for nil exchange on the other side oh, of the fight. Oh, and Dance is gonna go down too. Super, ooh, he'll get caught by a hoof stomp, Lin pressing forward, oh, the Ursa falls off to the side, Lin takes a stun, and now stuck in the Sprout. Does have a firefly in just a couple of seconds, but it don't matter, as they say, as it's now 13 to 2 and could be a quick game here, Brian. And this is another issue. If they were on Dire, they could probably go for a really risky rush attempt at this point. With Forge Spirits, with Ursa, they might be able to try to sneak one away and kind of sneak one and kind of get back to the game. Yeah. But. On the radiant side well, of the stage. Can do it. Nice deny from Inflame, but it'll cost him his life. And XDD, he might be able to just kill this centaur. Oh, no, there's the double edge. Needs to be a little more careful. And will start to reinitiate here as he sips up the bottle, looking for the opening, but he sees Centaur eating that south, and we'll just wave for him back to safety. But Morphling. Just having a field day. This is one of those games where you're like, I'm so glad we put this Morphling mid. He's just, he's having the time of his life. Now, yeah, just a good draft they'll use their Roche advantage, move, or dire advantage, move right into the Roche pit. And they're going to extend this lead even farther. I, I think, talking about it, I do think Lincoln's first is the bit. Because it means that Batrider's going to have issues, Centaur's going to have issues, and that if he... Uh, like blink stomps his double edge won't do any damage you have to break it some other way it's just yeah. there's a lot of things that lincoln's is very good for in this lineup oh nature's prophet it's all it's all the right there we the go cool kids are doing man hey hey, hey. cool kids bone seven it's all the rage I, double null tally blade mail i want to know who the who the original dude is that 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 random somebody eastern in european club player that thought you know what i should go. I like those club players dude i shouldn't <laughs> I should just yeah, go for like the most, so. one of the most cost-efficient builds in terms of damage possible. It might be clowny.
I it, just want right it, click. It is it is definitely cost efficient in terms of like your ability just to man up and click people down. It's very cost effective health. Uh, yeah, just cost effective EHP and cost effective Damage. right click. Yeah. Oh, oh, demons! He'll get scattered out. Oh, and speak of the devil, Brian. The hard right click. It'll secure the kill on the bear and five damage. Yeah. Jesus, no with the phase boost. See, normally you see the power chest. The phase boost is making it even worse. Dead. That's even... This yeah. might be lower at, like, total DPS because of the attack speed. Right, yeah, But it, it still makes your right click really potent and, Radio oh, in flame. He will fallen. get a stampede. That'll help keep him alive. Batrider coming in. I don't know if you've seen it last time yet. This game, Super will fall. But now in flame, gets caught inside of the sprout. The rest of LA I coming forward. They'll finish off the Bat Rider. And the rest of this Indian team will just start to evaporate. They get another kill on the Nature's Prophet. So uh, at least more of an even trade than they found. But it looks yeah. like a two for four as they find the Jakiro. He moves out of fog. He'll go down. Rasta just focusing on the tower. Wards fly through, and it'll be a. Another huge exchange for the Dire. I can't Radiant imagine they'll, they'll, they'll stick around much longer. And I don't think this is a good showing of L LV's strengths. I think this is I think this is their out. I think they're knocked out of... Well, no, I think they might fall down to the loser's bracket at this turn. Radiant it's hard to tell. I, I just gotta find it. But... Yeah, I think they're out after this. Yes, they will be out after this. So, it's unfortunate for LV. They're a very talented squad with a lot of good players, and I think they just... Maybe were a bit too risky with their draft, considering it's a best of one. This is Loser's Bracket. They lost to Hyper Glory Team 2-1 earlier. Yeah. I mean, there's good players on this LV squad. I mean, no, I, got... I, I think you make a really good point. This is Loser's Bracket, best of one. This is, I guess you could argue that if you really think uh, you, you're yeah, not going to win, might, that you, you well want to do crazy, something that's crazy. a little different, catch them off guard. But this feels a little too, too off the I think wall they come in here as me. favorites, though. When you've got a team with DDC and Lynn and, like, these really accomplished players, like, uh, they didn't have the Dota buff advantage, I don't think. But uh, they, I, I think no. personally, like LAI are 59%. In the I favor, think so. talent-wise, LV is very strong. All right, XDT gets initiated on XDD coming in, trying to save his buddy. Won't be successful. The lasso flies through, but follow-up coming in. Your Mystic Flare will bring down the Ursa. XDD still alive. Wave forms forward to finish off the Centaur. Now DDC caught inside of the Sprout. He gets stunned. He takes the right clicks and. It's a disaster, as they say. I really thought the Morphling was going to fall. He was standing in double fire. Yep, there you go. He's, he's made of like water, whatever. dude. Come it's on like, now. Yeah, I'm made of water. GG is called. and I didn't play WoW. I can stand in the fire. Really not a moment too soon. 14 Die minutes. And you don't. You hate to call him too early, but that was just a... Yeah, I come back from that. That was, was a massacre. And 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 Ursa's not really a great comeback hero as much as he's a really good mm, snowball no, hero as well, not. especially in a scenario like that. And... He just never, I feel like the Ursa just never got to do anything. Poor, poor Fuzzy Wuzzy.